Do you wonder if you eat too much sugar? Do you wonder if sugar is really bad for you? Do you love sugar and you just don't want to know the answer to either of those questions? I understand. My name is Dr. Vicki Peterson and honestly I'm a former sugar addict so I know the love of sugar. And why is it that we love sugar so much? That sweet taste not only uh, well, it stimulates a pleasure center in our brain, so it's, it goes beyond what we taste in our mouth, but sweet really stimulates us and makes us feel pleasure. And also what it does is, well, it can cause a lot of problems, but sweet is safe, meaning that historically things that were bitter sometimes could kill us, but things that were sweet were usually pretty safe foods. So we've got the safety on one side and then we have the brain connection with a um, chemical called dopamine and that influencing our pleasure center. We currently eat 40 times more sugar than we used to. Back in 1776, the average American consumed four pounds of sugar per year, per person. That has ballooned to 160 pounds per American per year unbelievable. The World Health Organization states that 14 million deaths per year for Americans occur as a direct result of what sugar is causing as regards degenerative diseases. So they are absolutely, I don't know if you've heard the recent guidelines, but they're asking us to decrease our added sugar amount. So that's really key. I'll come back to that, but they're asking us to decrease our added sugar in our diet down to 5% of our calories or about six teaspoons. Honestly, here at Root Cause, we cut that in half and say about three teaspoons per day, which is 12 grams. So there's four grams per teaspoon. And um, the American Heart Association and the World Health Organization is recommending 25 grams per day. So that's about six teaspoons, but we, we cut it in half for optimal range. But certainly uh, changes would be great considering there's 12 grams, sorry, I have it written down, how many teaspoons of sugar in, ah, 15 teaspoons of sugar in just a normal can of soda, 15 teaspoons. And the recommendation, the high recommendation is six teaspoons. So um, there was a comment I read that, that one can of soda per week still is too much for children, let alone adults. So uh, we get too much of the added sugar. And I keep saying added with em emphasis because I don't want you to be confused about naturally occurring sugar. So people say, well, but fruit has sugar. It's different because when you're eating a whole piece of fruit, yeah, there's fructose in that fruit, but there's also antioxidants and vitamins and minerals and fiber. And so you just can't tease it out and say, oh, sugar is sugar and it's all the same. It's absolutely not. Now with that said, I want you to eat your fruit, don't drink your fruit. So I'm not talking about a glass of orange juice or giving kids uh, juice boxes, drink the water, eat the fruit but realize that fresh fruit is not an added sugar. That's a naturally occurring sugar. Fortunately, this year, 2018, a new labeling law was mandated such that our labels will very soon be reading the added sugar. So when you look at the ingredient label and the breakdown of the nutritional label, they're gonna have a separate line for added sugars, which is great. So people won't, so if you're, you know, because sometimes people would bring, um, I don't know, like a, a fruit bar, you know, and, and it was just fruit and nuts. And they were like, well, look at all this sugar. And if you looked at it, there was no added sugar in the ingredients. It was, you know, there were dates or raisins or something like that. Not that you want to go overboard, but that's not added sugar. That's natural. Okay. I beat that one enough. Um, a big one when you're looking at sugar is high fructose corn syrup. You've probably heard about this, but it's, it's a really offensive type of sugar. Unfortunately, Soda companies use it a lot because it's so cheap, very, very inexpensive. But we've learned a couple of things about high fructose corn syrup. And um, one is that it can cause a leaky gut. So that might be a term you're familiar with. If not, what it means is that because high fructose corn syrup is just fructose in the majority, is it takes a lot of energy for the gut to, to digest it and uh, absorb it and it, it causes some inflammation or 
effort on the part of the lining cells in the gut and it can kind of open them up so they, they lose their sort of tight junction network and you get this temporary leaky gut when you consume a lot of fructose, which is dangerous. Um, the other thing that occurs is that it really affects your liver and causes a fatty liver. Now this is something that really, you can see the time coincidence of what's called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and the advent of us as Americans consuming a lot of high fructose corn syrup. Prior to about 30 years ago when, when the high fructose corn syrup really hit the market, when someone had a fatty liver, they were an alcoholic, and that was the end of it. You never saw a fatty liver unless someone was an alcoholic. Now all of a sudden, we created a new name for a disease and put non-alcoholic in front of a fatty liver when we're describing it to distinguish, of course, that this person is not an alcoholic and they have fatty liver disease, and so their liver is very sick. It's been infiltrated with a lot of fat. It's not working very well and can lead to liver failure over time or cancer over time, and it's due to, in much part, uh, too much consuming of high fructose corn syrup. So another reason to avoid it. There's also mercury residues in high fructose corn syrup, and mercury is a neurotoxin, so there's just nothing, nothing good to be said about high fructose corn syrup. And um, getting back to sugar for a moment, leaving high fructose corn syrup for, uh, you know, just in the category of that and just going back to sugar, added sugar again as a whole, there's a lot of diseases associated with excess added sugar. So it's, it's hard on the heart leading to um, obesity, diabetes, strong risks for cancer. So cancer cells love sugar. The pathway, the PKA pathway that leads toward cancer formation um, is actually driven by sugar. So the last thing you want to do is drive the pathway that it's going to move you in the direction of cancer, but that pathway is driven by sugar. That's not opinion, that's scientific fact. So, you know, we're in a very interesting era of keto diet, vegan diet, plant-based diet, flexitarian diet, you know, eat meat all day long. I mean, there's a lot of different camps and you could start tearing your hair out trying to make sense of them all. But there's one thing we all agree on and that is added sugar is a bad idea. So there's really no point of contention on that one. Um, but then it's about really understanding you know, how much is okay, what to do if you're kind of addicted and crave it. I just did a video and so that one will be up on this site as well. And it talks about sugar addiction and what you can actually do about it because you really can do a lot about it, which is exciting. Um, the last point I wanted to go over is just generally speaking, sugar weakens the immune system. So it's late November when, when I'm publishing this and we're into the holiday season. We just had Thanksgiving, but we still have the winter holidays. We have New Year's. It's definitely a time of year where a lot of sugar is promoted. And you do want to know this, which is that consuming sugar weakens your immune system for about five hours after you eat it, meaning your uh, white blood cells that kill bacteria and viruses and things like that, like the power of your immune system is thwarted in half by consuming sugar. So if you feel like you're a little on the edge of getting something, you're about to travel and planes these days can really harbor a lot of um, bacteria and, and viruses, etc. The last thing you wanna do is just be really pushing the sugar if you want to ensure you don't get sick, okay? If you're feeling great, you wanna do a little indulging, totally fine. Uh, people around you are getting sick, you wanna make sure you don't get it. Um, one key point is get the sugar out of there. Enjoy other foods, savory foods, whatever else health-wise you want to, to go toward, but that added sugar, it's terrible, and it will really, really thwart your immune system. So think about that. If somebody's eating a little sugar for breakfast and a little sugar for lunch and dinner, every five hours, you know, the entire day, their immune system basically is suppressed. So it's just really opening you up toward these winter colds and flus, which is the last thing you want to do with the holiday season. Of course, nobody wants to get sick ever, but really a bad time of year to ignore that. So 
what have we come around to? Sugar, we consume way too much of it. A lot of it is hidden. I'm gonna be going over that in another video about where sugar hides so you can be a little bit more aware of that so you don't fall into that trap. Um, but we want to think about maybe three teaspoons a day. So look at, you know, you can look at your food for a couple of days and look at the, um, uh, the nutrition labels and see how many grams you're getting. You want to stay somewhere, I would love it to be not more than 12 grams. 25 is, is the recommendation, but realize they're trying to get Americans down from an obscene number of grams. Uh, so 25 was a good starting point. If you can hit 25, then try to cut it in half and go to 12. Uh, but really try to work toward that because your whole health will improve, absolutely. And it's a sing single thing to focus on. Certainly we wanna do everything we can to help you get optimally healthy. That's why I'm here, but I wanted to focus on sugar for this video and hopefully you gained some information and it was helpful for you. And please share it with others if you enjoyed it. And if your health is not the way you want it to be and you're ready to start the new year uh, feeling healthier or just start the new month feeling healthier, please reach out. You can contact me via the website at rootcausemedical.com. You can give me a call. The number here is 408-733-0400 and we can set up a time for a consultation. But here at Root Cause, we're all about helping you regain your health, optimize your health long term. So no like flash in the pan, quick thing, feel better for a month and then you're back the way you were. That's not what we're about. We're about long term health strategies. They really do work. So I would love to help and I look forward to seeing you soon.